Hi everybody and welcome to Push Your Luck videos. My name is Eric and today we'll be looking at Jim. Jim is a 2016 release by Chris Handy uh, and this is part of his series of Pack O Games Season 2 or Series 2 that's coming to Kickstarter soon in March. Uh, so Jim is a 2 or 4 player game and it, uh, it plays about 15 minutes or so. Um, so if you play 4 players it's like a team team based thing. Alright, two, 2 versus 2 but it's probably best as a two-player game, I feel. All right. So in the game, uh, players will be drafting kits, getting kits into their, into their own, forming their own teams of kits, and then uh, the kids will be going through certain events uh, like uh, weightlifting, uh, basketball, and stuff like that, and then at the end of the game, you count points based on the difference between the skills of the kids that you have on, e on your team, on each of the players' team, all right, and then you score points based on that. And then whoever has the most points at the end of the game will win the game. So let's take a look at the components of the game, the rules of how to play, and my thoughts about the game. All right, so this is what you get in the game of uh, Jim. Very much like all his other uh, uh, pack of games. It's all cards, and it's all in this particular line. Uh, this card component quality is a bit thin, but uh, Chris mentioned that uh, this was not the final uh, final copy or final uh, production copy so it'll, I think it will be a better quality cards later on. Uh, the cards are nicely glossed though compared to uh, well most of the cards are always nicely glossed. So um, I really one thing I really like about is the art is pretty interesting to see all the kids there with uh, different um, different characteristics and different uh, skills. All right. It's also very interesting that the, the, the card box looks like a gym locker and I really like it because it does remind me like of a of a real gym locker. So if you line it up like that, it really looks like their whole, it's like a, like, like school, like your high school gym locker, sorry. So it's quite interesting. I, I like I like this uh, particular visual design. All right. And so those are the game components. Uh, how do you play the game? Now, um, the game comes in two phases. The first phase is drafting, where players will be drafting kits. They are also at the same time determining what events will be active, which will in turn uh, kind of help them decide what kits will be more valuable because they the kids will have certain contributions to the particular events. So for example, in this case like uh, Lin, Lin is, will give you four points uh, in, I'll bring it a bit closer, Lin will give you four points when you are doing um, in, the, in the football event and also one point in the basketball but gives you no other points in any of the other events so for example if you decide to get draft lin all right you might want to make sure that uh, the football and the basketball events are selected in the next phase all right so those the phase phase one is just to draft and then decide what events will be active in phase two you'll be then playing the kids down into these various events all right and then this will help you to it gives you certain points, and then at the end of the game, you score points. All right. So drafting is very simple. Uh, there there'll be two turns of drafting. Each time, each turn, there'll be twelve kids available for you to draft. Now, uh, out, in alternating player turns, each player will take one kit and put it in their hand. All right. If you take a bully, now bullies are indicated by uh, they have only one particular skill and it was, they are not really good at that skill and have a, a black color mark with a zero on it. All right, if you select a bully, then you can choose one of these events and shift it to the right two steps or choose two events and shift them one step each. Now, when I talk about shift, you're doing this. So, you see that there are bars here. So, you kind of shift here and shift here. So, this, this is two steps. All right, or I can shift two, uh, two uh, events one step each. So, I do this and I could do this, for example. All right, so why am I doing all this? Because at the end of the drafting phase, all right, after each player has 12 kits in their hands, the, the rightmost four events all right, will be selected. Those are the events that will be selected and the, the players will be competing in. All right? uh, if there's a tie, then the topmost will have priority. So in this case, right now, one, two, three, four, these are the four events that will be selected that players will be competing in. All right? So that's the drafting phase. Now, uh, let's go to the next phase of the game, which is actually playing... Uh, the cards down to score points. So after uh, the drafting phase, the four events that are selected, you put them in a row like so. The two events that are not selected, all right, you flip them over the other side and now they become coaches. All right, so now you have uh, Coach Garcia and Coach Davis. 
Then players will now take turns playing down one uh, card from their hand into any of this event's three slots. So you see that each event actually has three slots, like so. Alright, okay, I can put a kit here, or here, or here. Alright, so uh, this is how players will be playing cards down and uh, eventually hope to score points. Now, the inter interesting thing about playing a, card, a kit down into that particular event is uh, you're trying to do so is because at the end of the game, all right, you will see all kids on your side that has the blue skill, which is in this case the ping pong skill. You add up their numbers, all right, sum total, and then you compare it with your opponent's sum total. If you are more than them, all right, the difference is the points you score. So for example, if I had seven here and my opponent only had two here, it will mean that I score five points because I have more than my opponent and the difference is the points I'll score. So that's how you score points and win the game. Now, when you play a the kit down to any one of these events, you can play anywhere that you want. When you play it to that particular event, uh, after you place the kit, you can do one particular special ability. It can be the event special ability or any one of these uh, uh, special abilities depending on the kit that you play. All right, so in this case, I could play the blue ability, or I could play the red ability, or the uh, sorry, I could play the blue ability, or I could play the purple ability, because the now, because of the rate ability is not in play, all right, the rate ability's event is not in play, so there's no rate ability for me to activate. So in this case, I can only play the blue activity or the purple activity. All right, uh, sorry, action, blue action or purple action. All right. Now, if you play the bully, the interesting thing about bully is that not only can you do the same as what I mentioned, you can also now shift one of the coaches. Doesn't the color doesn't matter right now? Shift one of the coaches to one of your event side. So what happens is that when the coach is here, it kind of reduces the chaos here, which means that it kind of protects the kids that are inside here from your opponent. So your opponent can no longer uh, like manipulate the kids or move move the, the, the cards that are here to anywhere else. All right, why do I say that? Because a lot of these events is all about shifting the kids around, uh, either replacing it or doing other stuff to it. So let's go through the events. Uh, the actions of each of the event. So for the weightlifting one, for example, it says lift any kits. So what happens is that you actually take a take a card from anywhere, all right, put it in your hand, and then you replace it with another card from your hand. All right. So this is uh, lift any kits. Next, the the yellow one, which is the tuck of war, swap any kits. So you can choose any kits from two different sides, all right. Like so, I can choose. I can swap this uh, Kauri with a uh, Steven, for example. So I can just swap it like so. Okay. All right. Next is the ping pong one. Switch two kids. So you choose two kids who are on the same side, like so. Then you can swap them. Like this. All right. Next is uh, force the kid. So this is kind of interesting because you randomly choose a card from your opponent's hand, and then that op the, the opponent must now play that kid on their next turn, and then that opponent cannot also can also not activate the green ability, and also cannot activate the orange ability. All right. So I'm. I haven't played enough to figure out why this restriction, uh, but it's kind of interesting that there's such a restriction available. Alright, so the other two abilities that uh, for this particular example were not shown, alright, is the orange one and the red one. So the red one is like dodgeball, so you move a kit. So you can move a kit from uh, here to any other any other event, alright, up to you. Alright, so that's the orange one. Uh, sorry, the red one. So the orange one is basketball. So what happens is that you pick a kit from your opponent's hand and then you also give a card from your hand to your opponent's hand as well. So it's like swapping hands. Alright. So as mentioned, uh once all the kids the kids have been played in the event, that means all 12 cards have been played, then you start counting points for each of the event and then whoever has the most points uh will win the game. So let's go to my thoughts about the game. So what do I think of gym? I like it. And it's an interesting game. Uh the drafting part can be a bit tedious. Alright, there's 12 kids to draft from and then you're trying to shifting events and I'm not sure how much the shifting of the events matter in a way um, there's not so much screwage you can do in terms of selecting what events you cannot like haha I chose all the the uh, the bullies and then that causes only certain events are selected because four out of six events are selected and even if your event is not selected most of the kids have a certain a secondary uh, ability that will still be helpful along the way and even then uh, when you go to the next phase of um, select 
placing your kids and then activating events. Most of these events help you to manipulate a lot of things. And so I'm not too sure about the selecting events part and drafting. So drafting is kind of the weak point for me in the game. Uh, but actually playing the second part of the game where you're playing the kids down, activating actions, uh, is, is pretty fun. Uh, there could be a bit of AP analysis paralysis, mainly because there's so many different... Uh, well, there's not really that many powers, but there's still quite a lot of powers to process and think about. And then there's so many different combinations of in your hand that you can play play uh, the kids. And then there's a lot of meta gaming going on. Uh, should I do it? Should I do this now? But if I do this now, my opponent will easily swap it over or, or, or steal the kid onto their side. And so you need to uh, try to think a lot of uh, combinations, a lot of possibilities, and see several steps ahead to play this well. And so that's uh, quite interesting to me. It could, as I mentioned, it could take a lot of time if players really want to think about it, like think very long and stuff like that. So it, it could bog down the game. Uh, but the game will start to move faster uh, near the end because there's fewer and fewer spaces for you to to, to play the kids down. Uh, I, I kind of like the art as well. It's pretty interesting because uh, I do know uh, a few people of with these names in the game and they kind of, the, the picture just kind of remind me of how they are like and what they are like, so that's kind of uh, funny for me. But all in all, I feel that uh, Jim is it is an interesting game. Uh, I would recommend this. I, I would recommend Jim. Just take note that there are certain um, uh, little little problems for me. All right, like the drafting and uh, the AP part um, that might kind of like uh, sour the taste for you. But I will feel that uh, this is a game that uh, does reward as you play more often because then you will. You can see the different combinations you have. There's quite a lot of things that you can do in terms of manipulating and uh, meta gaming and stuff like that. So uh, I'll recommend Jim. All right. Uh, once again, thanks to Chris Handy for this review copy, and thanks for watching.